man, has influenced my life in so many ways that I just, you don't realize it because I grew up with it. Right. <laughs>
Now the story that I heard on that was is that it was a little boy that was terminally ill, and Elvis uh, signed that scarf and gave it to him. Say Perry, or it's hard to tell the name. To Ricky, Perry. I can't uh, tell. I'm not sure to be honest. I uh. don't remember. Uh, I think it was Perry. I think it was. Yeah. And these these were shirts that belonged to Elvis. Wow. That a personal collector donated to us. Uh, we even replicated the light switches right here. Those are the same light switches that are in the jungle room. They're they're lights. Like like yes, yeah, right here. You know, Cut them on just like you can in the jungle room, but that's so <clears> crazy. <throat> it's pretty cool. Worn shirt. Wow, and there's another one of his shirts here. Paisley is always cool. It's cool in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Yeah, I would say that would have been the late 60s, early 70s. Yeah, wow. And this is just a tiger's den here. This is just where we start off our, uh, our, our, our tours and then we go on to the museum part. Let's go. Oh my goodness. Wow. <clears throat> now right here, we have a uh, Kang Reed. This was Elvis' karate instructor later on. Some pictures of Kang Reed in this dojo. In this dojo right here. Of course, the cool part now is, <clears throat> and I don't mean this morbid or anything, but Kang Reed passed away on August 16th, what, what 2019. So really? day Elvis passed away. So I mean, that was- Is know, he here in Memphis? He, his son has a studio here in Memphis. Oh, wow. And he did live in uh, North Mississippi, I believe. Right. Don't hold me to that, which is just right across the state line. Yeah. Uh, here's some pictures of Kang Reed and Elvis, uh, some more students and stuff. All these pictures right here was taken in our dojo. Yeah, that's Elvis right there in the bottom in the middle. Yes, and Is Kang Reed to the left. Yeah. Far right was Dave Hepler, who we had here in August, who also was a very uh, known martial artist. Uh, and he studied here too. So King Reed went on tour with Elvis? Uh, I think sometimes he did. I yeah. think he did That's travel cool. once or twice. I don't think he made it a common practice, uh, but I do think that's where Elvis gave King Reed Cadillac. I think but before we continue, I we should mention, like I said, you are related to Elvis. Yes, I'm a second cousin to Elvis. Uh, my my parents are Billy and Joe Smith, which was Elvis's first cousin. My grandfather, Travis Smith, was Elvis's mother's. They were brother and sister. Right. And that's a relation. I lived at Graceland uh, all the way up until past Elvis's death. Wow. So uh, Elvis moved us up there, I believe, in 1974. Uh, of course, we, you know, uh, Stayed up here until after Elvis passed away, and then we moved. So where in where in Graceland was your bedroom, or where did you stay? Well, it was not in the house itself. Elvis bought us a double wide trailer, uh, and he actually bought it to my understanding for the guys. And then when he called Daddy and had Daddy come back to work for him, and he moved us into that double wide trailer. Very and I'll cool. I'll show you some cool stuff about that double wide trailer. Yeah, I heard. Very cool. Now, right in here, we got some stuff from the Colonel Parker. Uh, this come off of Colonel Parker's house. Oh, wow. That's from right before they tore it down. Of course, that's Jerry Lee Lewis's sunglasses and his motorcycle seat. Wow. And then we got a lady that donated a scarf, and I love the way she did it. It's Elvis with a scarf or tickets right here. She donated it to you. That's so sweet. Wow. That's amazing. So this is all from the Colonel's house, huh? I said donated. I should have said on loan. Right. We were talking before. This is probably about when people come here. It's about an hour long tour. About an hour long. Yeah, tour. we're doing a shorter version. Very short version. And we're yeah. and I'm highly recommending people come here and take the time to look at everything that's here. But I do want to tell you a little bit about uh, myself real quick, so yeah. we can kind of. Uh, Elvis had a big impact on my life. Uh, I do not do this here for money. This is not why I'm here. I'm a full-time police officer. So that's for how I make my living. If you know anything about Elvis, you know Elvis loved law enforcement. Yeah. I got into law enforcement. He loved martial arts, obviously. I got into martial arts. Well, 
I really got fascinated with uh, MMA when it first started coming out. Of course, I was on up in age and there was no way I could ever. That's where I come to my family's case right here. Uh, he was actually the summit fighting champion, Bantamweight champion, and he just, he, he had a, he's got a son now that's one years old, so he decided. Is that his name, Dave the Dream Smith? Dakota the Dream Smith. Dakota. Dakota. And he's called Dakota the Dream Smith because he was living his dream. His right. dream was to be an MMA fighter. Uh, so and you kind of trained him? You kind of got no, him started? I, you, can't, I just got him interested you in You used to wrestle with him and play around. He started training uh, at uh, Memphis Judo Jiu-Jitsu with okay. uh, Andy Rich and, uh, and uh, uh, Zach Underwood, and both of them are phenomenal, uh, phenomenal coaches. So cool. Of course, the piggy bank right there, it's a bicentennial piggy bank that was given to me in 1976 by Elvis. Aww. And... Uh, <clears throat> This right here was Gladys's credit card. Wow. And then back then it was just, it was broken half. I, we figured they, she paid it off or something. Yeah. So, and I'm just touching on a few things. Gladys's here. credit card, my goodness. The lamps right there and the other lamp was lamps that Elvis helped picked out when he helped furnish our trailer that we right. lived in. He had quite the eclectic taste, right? He had, look at that. I mean, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Now, and the then, coolest thing to me is this toy car right here. Right. I was looking at that. Yeah. What's and that? And the reason that's so cool is, is because when my daddy is eight years younger than Elvis, and when they would go to Uncle Vernon's and Aunt Gladys's house, when my little daddy was a little boy, Elvis probably would have been about 14 to 16 somewhere. Uh, he'd get his cars out and let daddy play with them. And daddy has quite a few more. I had a hard time getting the one in here. Uh, but Elvis finally just said, you just keep him, Billy. Right. But to think that Elvis, you know. He used to play he, with this car. He was running around, bang, bang, bang. And that's a, it's a Tootsie. It was made by Tootsie Toy Company. <clears throat> wow. So that was that. cool, Russell. Yeah. So what's uh, funny is, when I think about it, I mean, he's famous for giving away cars. Was, and, and his, you know, you're the first one to say that. I never even thought about that. He gets started in early there, age. That's where it all began. Yeah, that's pretty cool right there. Yeah. I never thought about that. Yeah. Of course, the razor was Elvis's that he gave to my daddy, I Look think, at in that. 1965. Wow. That, was, that was Elvis's razor? That was Elvis's razor. Oh, my God. An autograph from the Colonel or thank you card with the that Colonel. That was to my daddy right there, thank you. Colonel. Business card on the far right down there was a business card that the, the Colonel had made. I mean, Vernon had made for daddy, I believe. Personal security for Vernon Pressy and Graceland. Wow. This is the same type of pinball machine that Elvis had in his office and later moved to the racquetball court. It's a knockout pinball machine. It still works. Still works. <laughs> I say it does no one. Yeah, there we go. Oh, that sound. Mesmerizing. That's so cool. Now, right here is the contract on the double wide trailer that we lived in. And oh, yeah. by the way, it is still at Graceland. Uh, this is a quick, cool story. Elvis in 1974, when him and Linda, and this is a story I was told, was here in this dojo. Uh -huh. The next day they went looking for trailers and there was a place here in Memphis that's still in business called Dick Moore Mobile Homes. And he actually was open and Elvis went down there and the fans naturally swamped him and he really couldn't, he really couldn't look at trailers. So he asked Dick Moore, do you have any paper I can sign some autographs? He said, well, Elvis, the only thing I got is my business cards. So Elvis started signing out Dick Moore mobile home business cards and handing them out. And that's one right there that he signed the back of in the glass case. Wow. If you look at the back of it, it's got Elvis' signature. Look at <clears> that. <throat> that's so wild. <clears throat> well, now, later on that night, I mean, later on, Elvis actually asked him, hey, can we come back tonight? And, you know, because I can't look at him right now. And he said, yeah, sure. So I think they went back up there about around nine o'clock and uh, with their flashlights looking at traders. Well, this is the contract that Elvis signed 
on our $20,000. Well, yeah, there's the signature right down there, right? Uh, if you look up the top, that's a copy of the check that Elvis wrote putting $3,000 down on it, right above this contract. Now, when Vernon got oh, the right bill, there. yeah, when Vernon got the bill the following week, because Elvis didn't like dealing with his daddy when it comes to money um, and stuff like that. So he would do stuff like this to have, keep from hearing his daddy, I think, uh, say anything about how much money he spent. Right. Well, when Vernon got the bill the next week, he wrote the check that you right there, right. paying it off for seventeen thousand two forty-five. That's a copy of the check, and then that's the envelope oh, that they mailed it on. So Vernon paid off the rest of it right away. Yeah, right away. Right and, away. And then we moved up there shortly after, uh, and you know the rest is we stayed up there until, like I said, end of seventy-seven. A couple of months after Elvis passed away, we, huh. we moved to a Hornet, in Mississippi, and ironic enough. I'm a police officer in Horn Lake, Mississippi, and that's where Elvis had his Circle G ranch at. Right. So is this Circle G ranch still around? It, it is still there. It's uh, not much there now. The uh, 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 what is it? Honeymoon uh, Hun house. The one in Palm Springs, or no, no. the one in the, no. the ranch is still there. And then the uh, of course they really didn't stay in that house as much as they did the trainers that was there. Oh. They are no longer there. Uh, they moved them to Graceland. As a matter of fact, and our trader is the only one, to my knowledge, is still at Graceland. So I, when I was there two years ago at Graceland, I must have seen the trailer. What you probably I, did. Now, the last time I took a tour, which was, I've only actually took about one or two uh, since we moved. Uh, it was been a few years ago, and they actually say it says on the tour that it is the only one still up there was Billy and Joe Smith's trailer. And I think they used that for uh, uh, the archives, maybe? Right. Uh, I think, but I might be wrong. That's got to be weird for you, though, that people are touring the house that you used to hang out in and be in. Not not weird in a like like, I guess just for you for you to go on a tour is not really a tour. It's like going back to your old house. You know yeah, that you know yeah. the house better than anyone. Yeah, I mean it, 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 it's you know it's, it don't impress me at all because, and I don't mean that in a negative way, but I lived there. Right. You know this that was an everyday thing life for me. Uh, but Elvis made Graceland. Graceland didn't make Elvis, you know. Right. I mean, when Elvis passed away, it just, it lost its magic. Of course. You know, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard that so, before from people. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that's why it's open for tours and all that, because right, it's not, it's... Right. Which is a good thing for fans, you know, I think. And if you had not been to Graceland, you need to go. Yeah, you, you definitely to go. need to go. It's, it's a, course. it's, it was Elvis's home, and now it's a house. And yes. that's yes. right, the way I look it, at it. For the, for the fans... It is a great place, you know, to 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 learn about Elvis. Oh yeah, and it's a three. You spend three, four, five hours there. Right. It's crazy right. how yeah. much stuff there is to do there. Yeah, but see, we're trying to bring you the other sides, you know, the 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 things, the hobbies that Elvis got because Elvis loved martial arts. He did. Yeah. And it, you know, he's trying to make that. Uh, he's trying to get that Gladiator movie done. Right. With Gladiator, and that's pretty cool. A lot of that was. Filmed at uh, TKI Tennessee Karate Institute, which is run by Kang, uh, excuse me, Patrick Wren, who is also a great place to visit here in Memphis too. So, okay, cool. So. Okay. Now, right here, I'm sure most folks, if you're an Elvis fan, you know the Memphis Mafia. Yeah, this is when they got all deputized by Bill Morris. Right. There's my father right there. And, of course, that's, I believe that's Elvis. I think so. <laughs> well, if you look at the shirt that Dr. Nick has on right there, yep. there it is. That's right the there. same so, shirt, eh? That's the same shirt, you know. So that's kind of cool. That's really cool. Can we start over? Uh, we were just talking about your growing up with Lisa Marie yeah. and all that, but you're talking about how, uh, we sorry, I put the camera down, we just started talking, and I, I was like, I should be filming this. This is incredible. Uh about growing up with Lisa Marie and growing up with right. the family, and then you don't. Re but you talk about how Elvis influenced you, right? Well, I mean, that's like I was telling you a while ago. Uh, uh, last time I seen Lisa was I was seventeen, and uh, of course, and before that, you know, of course, Elvis had already passed. I was eleven when Elvis passed. But when Elvis, would, I mean, when Lisa would come in town, uh, we'd stay up just practically all night playing and stuff like that, and. Uh, and, and that was that was like a world within itself inside them gates. And then, you know, later in life, after Elvis passed away, of course, you know, uh, like I was telling you, everything that's happened in my life, including Elvis passing away, 
uh, molded me into who I am today. And, and, and you know, uh, somebody asked me, and I really never really thought about it, because uh, I was older when I got into law enforcement. They asked me, you know, did, uh, you know, did uh, Elvis influence you become law enforcement? I had to think about that. And the more I thought about it, I went, oh, God, man, the man has influenced my life in so many ways that I just, you don't realize it because I grew up with it. Right. And, and you know, it's just like, you know, your big cousin that lives next door. That's the way it was for me. Right. So, and, Very uh, cool. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Yeah. Really cool. What a life experience. I just, I've, I've, I've had an awesome life. But you're still young. It's still going. And that's what I love about it, you know. And, I mean, I could tell you all kinds of stories, you know, and make up stories about this and that. And... Why do that? Because what I have is the truth. Right. And it's, it's not as much as others it, but it, what I got is the truth. Yeah. And that's enough. You know, and like I was telling you, I don't do the politics of Elvis. Right. Uh, I don't, I don't, I've never read a book about Elvis. Not even the ones my parents have been involved in. And the reason I don't do that, Scott, is because I keep my memories pure. Right. I know what Elvis meant to me, and I know who he was to me. And I don't care where he was or who he was dating or who he was going to marry or wasn't going to marry and all that. I don't care. What he was to me was some boy. He was an idol. He was a big cousin. He was a leader. And uh, he was my world at the time. Of that course. Sense, you know? Yeah. And you put a lot of work in this yeah. place, obviously. What's that up there? I was, that just caught right my eye. here is uh, they got on the card. Now, I was not here when they wrote the card out. They said birdhouse. But it's a, technically it is a birdhouse, but it's a duck house. This <laughs> duck house was made out of the wood that come from Orville Bean's house. Orville Bean was who my grandfather and Vernon worked for back in the uh, 30s, you know. Right. And, uh, when they tore his house down, they made wood. I, I love old wood like that and stuff. That's great, yeah. Cool. A duck house. <laughs> wow. Now, these suits right here, the one on the left is just a replica to show you. When Elvis was presented by, uh, with the Lee County Sheriff's Badge from right. uh, Orville, uh, excuse me, from Gene Autry, not the movie star Gene Autry, but the Sheriff of Lee County. There's another Gene Autry in the there world, is. or there was? <laughs> well, this is Tupelo, Mississippi, yeah. when Elvis got presented the Lee County Badge. That was the suit that he specially went out and bought just to present Elvis and meet Elvis and present him with that badge. So that was Gene Autry, the sheriff, not Gene Autry, the act actor. I never thought there could be two Gene Autrys. So that the, is kind of an unusual name, ain't it? That's the one on the left you're talking about. So, or the, the one on the right. The one on the right. So the left is? A replica. A replica. Very cool. This is records uh, and... Well, this yeah, this is a, a, from a private collector, a guy named Tennessee Ted, the mayor of Graceland is what they call him. He's pretty cool. But if you look at this book right here, that's what this book is. Okay. Now, if you look about uh, about an inch and a half up, you'll see Elvis's signature right there. Now, to our knowledge, that's the oldest signature outside of Graceland that, that we know of. This, so what, what, what year is, what do you think that is? That I'm going to say this was going to be late. 40s. Wow. Because I think he was, it was still in Tupelo, Mississippi. The book was, so, you know, Elvis was 13 when they moved from Tupelo, and Elvis was born in 35, so mid to late 40s. Yeah, so. I mean, mid, mid to late 50s. Yeah, he's 35, <clears throat> 1935, he's born, so we're looking at, yeah, yeah, 48 maybe. Yeah. Wow. So somewhere 47, 48, right in there somewhere. Now, this. Record player was uh, signed up there in the top right hand by Scotty Moore, which was Elvis' good yeah. player. And of course, you know, I do want to say, you know, we've skipped over some. Yes. But there's so much more. There's so I much. I, yeah, but let's, let's reiterate there's so much to see here. Right here is a good picture. Now, you can get, <laughs> you know, get your picture. This is about where Elvis was standing right there, you know. Yeah. He did the. Uh, did this picture and a lot of folks seen this picture right here. Very famous photo. And this was now, this right about where he was standing. Now I'll show you this picture right here. This photo was taken right here? Yes. Wow. Here's the photo. With Kang Reed right there. Now of course we had to rebuild the stage and carpet it because 
you know, that was 40 yeah. some years ago. Is, it the, same, is it the same wall paneling? No, I, the wall paneling is not the same either uh, because this was a machine shop when we got it. Okay. And we had to clean it up and so, redo something. So, at, so it became something else, then you made it back into the dojo? Mm -hmm. Oh, we you recreated it. The, right. Oh, we wow. We recreated it, but it is the actual building. Yeah, it is the actual building. Very cool. And that's where Elvis was when that was taken. That's amazing. So it's pretty cool right there. Now these geese right here are kangaroo's geese. And this gee right here <clears throat> is the gee that he had on when this picture was taken. Of course, he added the stripes and the right. other patch. That's uh, the same one there, right? Yeah, that's the same one he had on. Wow. And that is his last gee that he ever wore right there, kangaroo. And there's a picture of him and his son, Young. It's incredible. And then we'll take you into the dojo and show you a little karate footage. All of, right, uh, let's do it. Karate in this building. Wow. So this is the actual room. This is the actual dojo. Of course, remember now, when Elvis was studying, that wall was not there, and this wall was not there. It was all open floor plan. Okay. And it went all the way back. All the way to where we saw, if, where it just were. Yeah, we're, if you'll stand right about here, you can see how we try to give it the image, like it goes all the way back yeah. to the back wall, and the beams line up. And right there where the star is is about where he was standing when that picture was taken. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, you re that's amazing that you lined it up like that. So these are the original beams. These are the original beams. And the paneling is original too. Uh, when when Elvis practiced karate here, after they got rid of the dojo, yeah, I believe it could become a church, and they painted the paneling white. And then it was, I believe, a machine shop or some type of shop. So when we got it, we had to clean the paneling really good, and then we repainted it, tried to match it back yeah. up the best we could. It looks, I feel like I'm inside. Now this is gonna be some, Right here, this video was taken in this dojo. Okay. And I will, the sound is not great, so I will try to narrate as much as I can. Okay. Right, the first guy in the black gi, black top is uh, Dave Hebler, and then the King Ree, Elvis, Red West down there in his suit. That's and then right you right. see Linda and Marty Lacker and Richard Davis back right there in the background. <clears throat> Let me see if I can get a, from the lights. Uh, it's the same. Let me go back a bit. Uh, that's better. Wow. What year is this footage from? It's been about 73, 74. Okay. Is that when he really got into crook? Like, when, when did he first get into martial arts? Yeah, Elvis got into martial arts in his 20s. Oh, he, wow. He was, he, was a, he was a very serious martial artist. He wasn't fake. Now, what he's talking about right now is a, a scratch on Elvis's hand that got infected. And you might have noticed that on that poster I showed you back there when he's doing it. We'll take a look at that again. He's got, yeah, he's, he's, got, got, he's got that scratch. Well, what happened is a fan reached to grab him, and they scratched his hand. And it got infected and swelled up. My, that would not happen <laughs> in 2021. No, no. <laughs> with a celebrity. No, no, no. <laughs> You're not scratching a celebrity. Now, Kang Ree's talking about Elvis's toe now that he, he yanked his, his uh, sock off. And he had an ingrown toenail. And Elvis had it cut out. And uh, Elvis is talking about they pulled the whole toenail out right there. <laughs> It's wild. That's red there? Red West, yes. Red West, yeah. <clears throat>
see the open floor like I was talking about. Yeah. And that's going to conclude that part of the video. So thank you. This is pretty cool. Uh, you did ask me about Elvis. He, 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 Elvis got into karate I, when he was in his 20s, or maybe right at 20, somewhere in there. And he was, you know, 20 plus year martial artist. He was very, very serious about it. Oh, he loved it. Now, he wanted to, if you'll look at that yellow card right there, this was actually Elvis's handwriting. Elvis wrote this? Yes. Wow. Now, not on that card. We, it was a smaller card. Right. He blew it up. But he, he wanted a patch to design a patch. This is the patch that he was designing. It's, you know, be gentle as a lamb in the matters of love, strong as a lion in the matters of honor. And then he had right here TCB and karate, as you see. Now, he had make patches right there, 13 inches, and I don't think that's what it meant because the 13 inch yeah. patch would have been big. <laughs> so I think it was supposed to be one to three inches, you know. So, oh, he's right. He's saying one to three inches. Yeah. yeah, that's what I believe it, it was supposed to be. And then you see where he put EP right there. Yeah. And you know what I noticed in that video? I've never <clears throat> seen that footage before. I've watched a lot of Elvis stuff. Uh, even when he's showing his karate... He's kind of entertaining the crowd at the same time, the people that are watching. He's just an entertainer. Yeah, he's... He's kind of... He's, he's, yeah. he's showing them karate, but you can tell he's enjoying entertaining right. as well. Oh, yeah. Just... Definitely. Just... Now, just not stop even singing. for a second, though. Yeah? Think. That happened right here. Yeah. That's wild. How cool is that? The 40... Yeah. Well, so, where would they have all been sitting? So. Which... If, so, the angle that we're looking at in the video... Uh, let's see here. They had... It would have been right here about where you're at because... Uh, or a little further back towards the stage because remember you seen you seen Linda and uh, right they were all over Davis here Davis all over there so they would have been back on the other side of this wall coming back and Elvis would have been standing right, right about there. there so that's pretty cool right there yeah oh it's right because this this no wall wasn't right, here this wall yeah. was not here amazing all right Joey thank you so much. You're very welcome. Uh, check out a gift shop, too. So see. many cool things. The patches, the t-shirts, spa guy merchandise. He was a smart guy. Thank you to Billy. I wish Billy was here to, to say uh, thank you for setting this up. This is amazing. Yeah. So, A couple pictures up there. Of yeah. The was all oh, that's right. I said I was, thank you for reminding me. I said I was going to show those a little closer. It's hard to see them. Maybe these over here might be better because they got the glare on. Yeah. Yeah. Is that better? Yep. Good deal, good deal. Much better. There's Elvis. <laughs> There's something that amuses me about him, about him in Red West sparring like that. Because Red is just in street clothes. <laughs> right, yeah. And, and there's a picture that you, the video we just watched. Yeah. Uh, Red hitting Elvis. And that's the, that's that's the, the scratch that I was wow. telling you about. That's the scratch. Yeah. That's cool. Well, Joey, what's the address here? It's 3217 Lucyville. We're two minutes away from Graceland or two miles. Uh, you don't, you don't. There's so much more here to see. So much. This is, we did a condensed version, but there's plenty to see here. Thanks to Joey. Thanks to Pat, Gabby, the baby. <laughs> and of course, Billy the Spa Guy for setting this up and everybody come visit this place. This blew my mind. And I've seen a lot in the past five years on these uh, YouTube tours and this is amazing. As an Elvis fan, this is a dream. Thank you, Joey. I appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed yourself, man. I am. And I'm going to say for the first time ever, peace out without showing my face. Peace out. Thanks, man. <laughs> All right. Appreciate you.